Hi, this is Madhusudan Raj, your host with my weekly report. So today we begin with the monsoon as usually. Last week I told you that the monsoon is quite deficient in India this monsoon season. You know, the rain is quite deficient in India this monsoon season. And because of that, what is happening is, you know, a lot of problems are going to happen in future. So last week, the agricultural minister, he said that poor rains may cut output and add to inflation moves. Now, as always happens, agricultural minister is basically trying to misguide the public by giving this kind of statements, economically ignorant statements. We have to understand that poor rains has, and cutting the output, the lower output because of a poor rains has nothing to do with inflation because inflation is purely monetary phenomena and it has everything to do with the supply and demand for money it has nothing to do with supply of and demand for economic goods so for example whenever an exchange takes place you know how the prices are basically determined when an exchange takes place there are two sides involved in the exchange process on the one side you have an economic good let's say for example wheat one kg wheat which is exchanging against let's say 100 rupees so on one side there is demand and supply of one kilogram of wheat and on the other side there is demand and supply of rupee you know, money basically so what happens is inflation has everything to do with the monetary side when the supply of money and credit increases out of thin air then what happens if we assume that the demand for money remains constant then this increased supply of rupee of money will depress the value of rupee so that means that the purchasing power of that money will reduce and basically now you have to pay more rupees more notes you have to give more notes in exchange for that same one kilogram of wheat so if the you know output of wheat goes down it is not going to be you know resulting in inflation what will happen is only the price of wheat will go up but in inflation price of every other you know economic good goes up because you know it's the purchasing power of money that is going down it is not that the output of other economic goods is fluctuating so Agriculture minister is trying to misguide the public. Inflation is purely monetary phenomena and for which RBI's reckless money printing policies are solely responsible when they are increasing the money supply out of thin air. They're printing a lot of truckloads of money. That's what is eroding the purchasing power of money. That's what is depreciating rupee. And that's why it looks like from the economic goods side that their prices are increasing. But as I said, it's just increasing the price is just an effect of inflation, not inflation itself. Inflation is always an increase into the supply of money and credit out of thin air without any backing of any kind of commodity like gold or silver. Second problems, you know, are states are center is you know ringing alarm bells uh, because the storage of you know water in dams is dipping down so and they are you know instructing the states that they should you know uh, use uh, water resources judiciously and properly regulate them again over here what is happening as i said is that the nature is having on our side you know uh, nature is giving us a lot of trouble but the government is increasing our troubles more the uh, all the natural resources are basically owned by the by the state by the government so and and they use central planning mechanism to basically allocate resources and again they don't have any prior system for guidance that where these resources are needed so what they're doing basically is they arbitrarily you know not arbitrarily actually they use politics as a guide for allocating resources basically so wherever votes are available the water will flow into that direction now that means the water, precious water is going to be wasted, the resources, the natural resources are going to be wasted. They are not going to be located where they are actually needed and they are going to be located where they are actually not needed. Instead of this, you know, uh, monopoly of government on natural resources like water, if you have private water resources, private companies owning all these water resources and other natural resources also, then the profit and loss system will allocate resources where they are needed. So guided by the profit and loss system, you know, they want to make profit. Companies want to make profit. They want to avoid losses also, importantly. So guided by this system of profit and loss, 
companies will drive the resourcing in the direction where they can maximize the profit and minimize the losses. So basically that wherever the demand will be there, wherever the business will be profitable, the water will flow into the direction. So that will solve the problem of efficient allocation of this scarce resources, natural resources, water. But again, all the dams and all the reservoirs and all the water resources and other natural resources are because they are owned by the government. This is a so-called public property. That's what creates problem for all of us. And on one side, nature is you know, putting us into trouble, but as I said, government is putting us more into trouble. Then you have other uh, news where, as I said in my last week uh, report also, that the uh, Indian industry people are instead of working hard and being productive and serving the consumers in the more you know best possible way, but using quality goods at, at the lower possible you know possible prices, what they're doing is they're going and asking the government for help. So for example, last week India incorporated seed economic revival package from the government. You know, so far, uh, C. Rangarajan has denied this package, but I'm sure how long he's going to deny because what is happening is all these industry people are in trouble. They have borrowed a lot of money, which was, you know, and they were misguided basically by the RBI's cheap, you know, monetary policy. You know, they, they kept the printing money and then suppressed the market interest rate below the natural rate of interest which you know which is determined by the time preference of you know society as a whole so they were basically duped by rbi's monetary policy they borrowed a lot of money they started many capital projects long-term projects and now when the inflation is high so the rbi is increasing the interest rate or not basically uh, bringing it down again and that's why the cheap borrowing money cheap you know borrowing funds are not available and they are finding this Indian, you know, industry is finding itself into trouble. And you know, whatever projects they have started, they are not in the position to complete them. It's gonna waste all this, you know, precious capital stock for of our economy, and that that is going to make us poor in the future. This is a typical case of you know business cycle, you know, which you can understand if you if you know the Austrian business cycle theory, developed by Ludwig von Mises and you know Friedrich Hayek and Murray Rosebond. Right, on the other side, uh, as because the current account deficit and fiscal deficit is ballooning, ballooning so uh, uh, Prime Minister is contemplating steps to contain fiscal deficit. That's what Mr. Mr. Chidambaram is saying. So Prime Minister Singh is contemplating a number of measures to contain fiscal deficit and the government will get the economy back, on, back to high growth trajectory. Home Minister P. Chidambaram said on Tuesday. Now, as I said, again, this is all, all lies. Prime Minister cannot you know, bring the economy back on track or he cannot revive the economy by just reducing the fiscal deficit or whatever. That is only possible when governments stop existing and they stop spending a single rupee. You know, they allow the free market capitalist system to function properly. You know, then all the economy will revive. Now let's see that. You know, the other news is very interesting. You know, which is in line. It's basically contradicting this particular you know announcement by Mr. Chidambaram. So how Prime Minister is trying to basically contain the fiscal deficit? What he's doing actually is okay. RB uh, government is basically they announced uh, rupees. 4,575 crore plan to revive five public sector units. So this is how Manmohan Singh is going to reduce the deficit by giving all this free money to all these dying public sector units, inefficient, which are wasting our resources, taxpayers, you know, hard-earned money since last many years, I don't know how many, 60 years. We have to let these PSUs just go out of business, let them go to dogs, and then privatize all this, you know, not privatized government don't have to privatize anything they just have to get out of the market and the private sector will take over its functions you know on its own so they are on one side they are saying they want to reduce the fiscal deficit on the other side what they're doing is you know they are announcing all these kind of you know packages and that is going to increase the fiscal deficit it's not going to reduce the fiscal deficit if you see the government expenditure year after year, if you, if you see the data you know, on RBI's website or on Central Planning Commission website, then the government expenditure has never gone down throughout years. Every year after year, this keeps on increasing. So all this, you know, 
noise that they want to bring down the physical deficit and so-called austerity measures, you know, it's all just smoke and mirror the full public. All right. On the other side, uh, RBI is concerned over slow deposit growth. The Reserve Bank of India has expressed cons concern over slow deposit growth in a meeting with bankers. Alok Mishra, chairman of the Indian Bank Association, said on Monday. So as I said, people are becoming very wary of inflation and obviously they are not putting their money into banks, which is very good thing. That's the right thing to do into this highly inflationary, low interest rate, you know, a monetary system because what are you going to do by putting your money into the banks? The interest rates are so low, actually the real interest rate is negative. So basically instead of earning anything, you know, earning any positive interest over your bank deposit, you're going to lose your money because, you know, it, it, it real interest rate is in negative. So for example, if you put your money in bank and savings account, interest rate is something like 4 or 5%. Inflation is, uh, rate is running to you know more than ten percent basically. So what's what's gonna happen? The real interest rate is negative four or five percent. So every year you're gonna lose your money, which is sitting in the bank. So obviously people are taking a right decision by not putting their money into bank and basically by buying uh, precious metals, gold and silver, which is going to you know, secure their purchasing power. And on the other side, on one side, the banks are not getting deposited. On the other side, RBI Governor Louis Rao, Louis Supara, he's saying that uh, he's, you know, telling banks to beef up credit flow to farm sector. So when the banks are not having deposits already, right, and on the other side, he's, you know, basically telling banks to give more free credit to the farm sector. So farm sector is already, you know, a lot of getting a lot of free stuff, free free electricity and free water and this and that. And ultimately, you know, that's that's not gonna result into any kind of economic growth because all those farmers are not, you know, what they're doing is they're relying on free money and when the free money stops flowing, they start committing suicide. Basically, you don't have to rely on this, you know, free money. But RBI is pressurizing banks to lend this money into the farm sector, and I'm sorry, I'm sure if they do that, that's going to create one more bubble into that sector, and when that bubble will pop, farm sector will be in trouble also. Last but not the least, uh, Indian Reserve Bank is, you know, also trying to basically use, you know, persuade, you know, populace for not buying gold and you know they're thinking that whatever gold people are having somehow they can put to productive use you know so rbi is basically looking to you know announce some kind of measure where they will you know take people's gold and give them some kind of paper promises like you know exchange rate for EDF or some other kind of maybe gold back bonds or stuff like that so it's all baloney you know the the gold and silver which people is having there, you know, uh, in their home is basically productive itself. You know, people are holding gold and silver, this precious metal, because it's money. It's it's medium of exchange, and people are very much worried about the future uncertainty, and that's the reason why they are holding these gas balances in the form of precious metal, because precious metals are, you know, they are going to. So, you know, uh, you know, stabilize the purchasing, purchasing power of their wealth and that's going to give them a lot of control over the uncertain future. Again, you have to remember all these uncertainty is created by the government. So people should not get fooled by RBI's this kind of measures. They should never trade their gold, physical gold and silver for any kind of paper promises. Doesn't matter that is coming from the government or from the RBI because ultimately what will happen is, you know, as we are saying all around the world, even those people who are having allocated gold accounts, their gold is being leased out by the banks to somebody else. So when you finally go to take your you know, gold back, the banks are not having that gold. So don't give your gold and silver away to the government. Keep it with you because that's going to help you in the end. Okay, thank you very much. I'm just finishing this week's report. I'll be back next week. Thanks a lot for watching.